back to Intestinal Scale Modeler, I'm Lee. Today we're going to do a review of another book, um, mainly because I've bought a few books lately and I just thought uh, it'd be nice to review them because there's not a lot of reviews of books on the internet so uh, for modelling and everything there's a couple of written words and things like that but nothing to actually show you what's what the content of the book is. So I thought this time, this is another one I bought from Ammo, direct from Ammo, but you can get them from eModels and places like that. Uh, and this is called Airplanes in Scale, The Greatest Guide, Second Edition. As you can see there, um, it's quite a nice thick looking book. Um, it's got some nice weight to it. It's um, it's not really a book book, it's more of a, um, like a very high quality magazine with thick covers and very shiny pages and things like that. Uh, on the back of the book, as you can see there, it just shows you a few models that's included inside the um, uh, the book itself and what they're using to to do their guides on and everything. As you can see, it's all World War II planes, uh, nothing else there at all. Um, and on here, it's just a couple of uh, what, it, what looks like uh, sponsors, Panzer Aces for airplanes. It's a bit strange. Okay, so there you go, uh, on the spine, not a lot as well. Uh, it does say second edition uh, by Ricardo Abad Medina and Javier Lopez de Anta Garcia. Um, and it's from Actheon Press. Uh, so let's get inside and have a quick look. Uh, you've got, um, I'm going to whip through this, I'm not going to try and make it too long for you, but just to give you an idea of what's in the book itself. Um, I know it's a bit shiny and everything, but it should be okay. And as you can see, there's, there's a little introduction, not a lot, but then they're straight into it with uh, this North American P51D um, that looks quite weathered and beaten up and everything. And it gives you an introduction about the, the aircraft, uh, the pilots and everything, a bit about the aircraft itself, like the, the Mustang and everything. And then we go into uh, materials employed, so what they used for um, the, kit, the base kit and the extras and aftermarket they've used as well, uh, such as decals and you know resin upgrades and you know all sorts of things. And it looks like it's gone to town on this one. <clears throat> And then it shows you to obviously take it off the sprues, how to cut it. I mean, this is this is quite good for a basic guy. It shows here how he cuts it. I mean, he does it a lot uh, a way that I do it as well. I mean, I do this a lot when, when it's in tricky positions, which is cut off the sprue and then cut with a scalpel afterwards. Um, and uh, and then obviously it's got filing, replacing how to replace rivets and or add rivets as well. Um, you know, doing the rivet lines, things like that. Um, and then again, it's like um, separating two pieces of plastic. Obviously, he's gonna this towel plane here. He's gonna have a, a, an angle, so they're really going to town on it. Inside the cockpit, you can see how he scratch built a lot of stuff here. It shows you how to do the extra bits that he scratch built as well. Looks a little, a little bit here about working with resin, doing the cockpit, uh, the instrument panel, <clears throat> and then weathering the inside. And obviously, they've gone for this. Um, uh, um, this tonal look here, um, you know, with the uh, modulation effects on the inside, which looks really effective, it looks very good indeed. Hopefully, you'll be picking up. And it tells you how to do a wood process and how they've done the floor and everything. Again, very nice processes, well explained with notes that correspond to the pictures and everything as well, which is good. And then going through again, obviously, like using a wash inside, like our UMP dark dirt and things like that. And how to make that? It, looks, it does look very effective, and he's um, he's done really well with that. I think that looks really nice, very nice indeed. Good modeler. Um, and then again, it's just going through about you know rescribing. Uh, looks like Liffen, um He's used hypodermic needles to recreate the machine guns, which is a fantastic little idea. Um, great little ideas already. That I picked up several things there straight away that would help a lot of people. Uh, the washes, they do it different to ours. It looks like they're using a uh, enamel wash there and really, I mean, a, a normal uh, clay waste wash like the UMP Dark Dirt would be fine there. And again, going through, putting, uh, putting decals on, chipping, you know, all sorts of things, rust, um, and uh, it looks absolutely a fantastic result at the end of it. Uh, so, nice little process. <clears throat> again, it gives you the paint uh, mixings here. You know, they, they've used Tamiya for all of this. And it says, like, it says here for the highlights, use 70% XF8 and 30% XF2, base coats, highlight shadows, fuselage, all sorts of things. So uh, they've really gone to town and given you the full explanation uh, of how to build that aircraft. And the end result, as I'm sure you'll agree, is great. And again, the same with this uh, Mackie. Um, again, same sort of process, basically. How to do the scratch building, what they thought they needed, what they wanted changed, what he wanted to add, take away. 
Um, very clear and concise pictures, um, very clear and concise instructions as well, um, and uh, very good. I mean, it's in total detail, as you see, again, a lot of resin energy on this one as well. And it takes you through the process, you know, fantastic internals on this, look at that. See if I can get you in on that. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic work. Uh, it's got it's a very good modeler. Um, and I would say it's going to be the same pretty much all the way through the book. Now, if you read this end to end, cover to cover, um, it's looking like they use it's a lot of the same techniques. I think the first two models are the same people. Um, and uh, they look, use the same presses, uh, same processes for each model. So it would be one of those that <coughs> it would you'd pick them up just uh, by reading them. I mean, I, I like this sort of hypodermic needle one. I think that's great for a um, machine gun because it actually got that hole. It's got you know, it's uh, fantastic. I didn't think of that before. So that's fantastic. <coughs> and again, uh, going through again, and this is by the same builder again. This is Ricardo Abel Medina. Yep. Um, and uh, so, he, so he's just going through a few aircraft and he's doing the same processes over and over again. Um, <clears throat> goes along with all his scratch building. I think this book will give you a bit of confidence to try something that maybe you wouldn't normally do. Um, and the, but the steps are all very clear and concise and they do match the photographs as well. Um, and there's another one by, this is another one, this is by the other builder, which is Javier Lopez de Anca Garcia. Um, and he again uses a lot of the similar techniques. Um, apparently, this uh, De Watuin is um, maybe a nice kit actually from Tamiya. I think I'm pretty sure Paul's done it. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he has. Again, similar sort of processes, different ways of doing it. Um, he's got a scratching method there, but it looks like he's scratching up his, his stuff. But um, Again, things like uh, you know using the cellophane to mask large areas and just edging it and stuff like that. A lot of people don't realise that they can do that. Um, and uh, you can see how he's got this. This paintwork's come up absolutely lovely here uh, on the towel and everything. Really is a nice, nice looking kit. And he's doing a lot of this fading. Um, I don't think he's done any pre-shading. Let's just go back a second. No, he's done no pre-shading. It's all post-shading. Um, and again, looks very effective. Very, I think that's probably a little bit over. These these bits are fantastic, uh, the nose and tail sections. But the main body looks a little bit comic-like, if I say. But I mean, I think uh, all models are subjective. And to be honest with you, that I don't think there's a right and a wrong way to build or paint a model. You do it how you like it. Um, a lot of these people saying, "Oh, it should be done this way. It's got to be done that way." Then you know they haven't really experienced life because they should experience different things. Uh, but again, the processes are good. Um, you know, there's there's nothing uh, different all the way through the book. Uh, it's just basically showing you their step by step guides of building these. Uh, how many are there? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight models uh, by these two builders, and they're very accomplished builders. Uh, they're absolutely fantastic looking models. I do. I mean, I like I like this 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 kind of effect. I think it's a little bit too cartoony, but I do like it. And I think anything like that has a place in modelling. Uh, well, that, that looks fantastic. Um, but uh, it's one of those things, again, it's all subjective and it's all down to your personal preference. And if, it, if you like it, then, then so be it. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, to be honest with you. Um, and then uh, you get to the end of the book. So we've got that finished. And then it's got a, a tools and techniques guide at the back. Basically going through uh, the tools, I think every modeler has got, you know, most modelers have got uh, these tools in their stash. I know I have several of each. Um, and then it tells you techniques like for, for cutting uh, off of the sprue, uh, for making patterns on tires, for adding extra um, areas around with uh, plastic card, um, you know, burnishing, uh, cutting resin, you know, clean up sanding you know how to measure your wings and rescribing uh, drilling punching riveting uh, gluing techniques and everything they're not in depth but you know they're just a uh, the little thing here about working with photo etch it doesn't really explain the process but it gives you some pictures to look at using decals gluing shear styrene which is uh, glass i would imagine um Opening registers, okay, so yeah, so opening hatches, how, how they do it and everything. Again, really easy, simple steps. To, it's not um, rocket science, a lot of this. 
acrylics with an airbrush, um, how, how he uses colouring pencils as well. Not something I'd, I'd like to do, I've got to say. Uh, acrylics using an airbrush, masking techniques, um, applying all paint, which is a dot technique there. Um, you've got the uh, chipping salt technique, sponge technique, and the hairspray method. Obviously, they go through all of them through the book and everything. Um, and then you've got an index at the rear. Um, and it looks like other um, um, books that they produce. And a picture of the uh, mug shots of the of the uh, the builders there, um, both Spanish. Uh, here in Spain, modelling is massive. Not on the islands, not on the ba Balearic Islands where I am, but mainland Spain, modelling is absolutely massive. It's a real popular uh, hobby. But then there's just adverts at the back and things like that. Uh, so overall, uh, I cannot remember for the life of me how much this cost. I think uh, it's on e models for about forty pounds. Um, and for forty pounds, it's it's expensive for a book. I have to say, forty quid is a lot to spend on a book. It is it is got uh, it's got good depth and it's over two hundred pages. Um, and the techniques involved are good. And they will if you're um, even if you're an experienced modeler, you can you can learn things from this book. Um, so I've had a flip through it a couple of times now. And there are techniques in there that I've picked up that you know I didn't use before. <clears throat> and as far as it goes, I mean it's well set out, it's well explained, the steps are easy to follow. And I think if you're looking to up your game with regards to um, weathering and things like that, and some of the techniques that you want to use, maybe try some different ones and things like that, then this is a great little book. £40 is a lot of money. Um, is it worth it? Uh, you're looking at £5 per aircraft there basically uh, to see, see how it's been built. I think. I think if you've got the spare cash, then it's actually a nice, it's more of a modern, it's a modern look at building air, aircraft because they don't have the, the um, they don't have the um, uh, panel line technique, you know, it's all post shading and things like that. They haven't got the uh, black method, the black basing method, but um, it's all post shading. Um, there's no pre shading being done or anything. So um, I think money-wise, it's it's a, I think it's probably a little bit expensive at, four, at 40. 30 might be better, I think. Uh, that would be in the right price range for that. Um, so uh, marks out of 10, I would give it probably 8 out of 10. And it's lost half a point because of the price. Um, but apart from that, it's a nice looking book. And it's again, it's a nice one to pick up. And you pick up and read through the process of one model, put it down, pick it up again, and, and, and away you go. Um, I'm glad I bought it. Um, it's, it looks good on my shelf. Um, and it's one I have picked up a couple of times, just read while I'm having a cigar and a drink or what have you. So um, I think that's a recommend from me. And um, that is the Airplanes in Scale Greatest Guide, uh, second edition. And I think it's from Ammo. I'm not 100% sure, but you do get it on the Ammo site. But um, you can get it from e-models and places like that as well. So nice book. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.